Over the past 20 years, trackless dark rides have appeared at destination parks around the world, showcasing their groundbreaking technology and versatility. So in 2016, the Walt Disney Company set out to replace a slow and barely functional ride with something fun, exciting, modern, and enjoyable for the whole family. The Disneyland Resort's first trackless ride. Welcome to Amusement Labs. Today's video takes us out west to Disney's California Adventure, where I'll show you the history, engineering, and technology behind Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters. This video is sponsored by generous patrons like Felix Monteza, Joe Chabas, Brandon Wiggins, and Tyson D, who get early access and more at patreon.com slash amusement labs. In 2012, Cars Land marked the end of Disney's $1.1 billion revitalization effort into the park, opening a refreshed Disney's California adventure along with new rides, shows, and attractions. One of these rides within Carsland was Luigi's Flying Tires, a reincarnation of the 1961 Flying Saucers of Disneyland. Construction of Flying Tires ran parallel to the rest of the land, opening 2012. But what opened was far less exciting. Gone were the guest-oriented pipes that allowed for easy movement, now requiring guests to lean into where they wanted to go. The ride was louder, slower, and in two years, the ride was shuttered and the tires were tossed and the air pumps were removed due to low ridership and increasing costs. Construction of Rollicking Roadsters started in 2014, where the area was closed as workers prepared equipment to bring in the resort's first trackless ride. While not much visually changed around the ride area, there is a lot that changed technologically speaking to bring this large 90 second dance of vehicles to life. To better explain how the ride works, we'll start with the vehicles themselves. Representing fictional cousins of Luigi from Carsoli, Italy, each all-electric trackless vehicle is engineered and manufactured by the entertainment services of Rausch, a multidiscipline engineering and manufacturing firm. Roush is also responsible for the vehicles of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Star Wars Rides of the Resistance. In order to provide repeatable and precise mobility for the vehicles, Roush is using motorized caster wheels under each vehicle. A caster wheel is a type of wheel assembly often seen on rolling furniture and chairs. Since each vehicle only holds two riders, the design is optimized for compactness. Each caster wheel rolls thanks to a small motor with precision feedback control. That caster wheel is then oriented by a yoke powered by another motor that precisely rotates that wheel a full 360 degrees around the center of the wheel. Because of the car's design, there are actually only two caster wheel assemblies per vehicle, and as you'll see, that's all it really needs. One caster assembly is located in the front of the vehicle under the hood, while the other caster assembly is located in the rear of the vehicle. With one wheel on both sides, the vehicles use two small unpowered caster wheels located on the sides of the vehicle, with one being spring-loaded in order to provide dampened stability. This setup requires fewer motors, motor drivers, power, and allows for quicker direction changes, tighter turns, and lateral movements. In order to provide precise feedback, the vehicles employ a number of vehicle tracking techniques on top of the rotary encoders that provide feedback control for the vehicles. The first is an RFID mat. During the ride's construction, the air pump holes from flying tires were plugged and a multi-layered mat was laid out. Just below the rough and running surface of the mat is a dot grid of RFID pucks that allow for more precision tracking. Scanners are located underneath the vehicle center between the wheels. These will scan for the pucks throughout the ride and compare them to expected scans. If there are any discrepancies due to slipping, due to weather, or adverse conditions, the vehicles can adjust. Unfortunately, due to the ride's exposure to the environment, the ride cannot run during rain or inclement weather. Secondly, the vehicles are tracked within the area via Wi-Fi-based LPS or local positioning system. 
by establishing an immeasurable connection with multiple towers called nodes. When the vehicle moves, the signal strength of these nodes varies. When this is evaluated, the ride control system can get an idea of where the vehicles are at that moment and communicate that with the vehicle. The vehicles communicate with the main ride control system by 5 GHz Wi-Fi. This is a private connection system just for the vehicles and ride system that talks to each vehicle for seatbelt checks, lights, vehicle status, and other safety directives. The cars are split into two groups of up to nine, and while they end up in different positions, they stay in their group. At the start of each cycle, the vehicles use a different packet of instructions, which represents their position in the dance. While it may seem that each song has a different movement sequence, the dances together are identical. The car's onboard computer, motor drivers, and communication systems are powered by a quick rechargeable battery located under the hood of the car. Located in the back left of the vehicles is a contact-based plug that moves up and down when parked. At the end of each ride cycle, three vehicles are instructed to arrive at the three corner parking positions in each group. The vehicles dock over a contact pad charger, letting them charge every three cycles. The plug then lowers down, pressing itself onto the pad, charging while guests load and unload. To move forward and back, the wheels are turned in line with each other. Moving sideways turns the wheels to the side in parallel directions. To turn, the wheels orient to form the turn radius like a motorcycle. To sway while moving, the wheels orient parallel again, taking turns rolling while adjusting for the swaying motion. At certain points, the vehicle will stop in place as the wheels orient into the next position, like at the end when the vehicles spin in unison. Once every guest is loaded, attendants will come by to check the seatbelts or help someone into a special ADA vehicle. When ready, operators will ensure the gates are closed and locked, perform a visual scan of the ride area, check the system status of the ride, and then together we'll press and hold down dispatch. The vehicles will then receive a synchronized countdown to begin their programs, and once the contact chargers retract, off they go. The vehicles will begin utilizing their casters to arrive at their positions and utilizing their RFID scanner and LPS to verify their position with collision avoidance. As the ride concludes, vehicles arrive to their ending marks, locating the proper RFID pucks and come to a stop. Seatbelts and gates unlock and guests may then disembark. The technology used shows not only how much can be packed into such a small vehicle, but how they can all work in unison to create a modern, family-friendly ride. And that's how Luigi's Rollo King Roadsters works. If you learned something and would like to see more, please like, share this video, and subscribe to join us next time as we take flight over the Golden State. You can also support what we do with early access and more on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.